Welcome to Win the Day from Back to the Bible. I'm your coach, Pastor Nat, and today we're going to talk about the book of Ezekiel. On a recent flight, I began to watch a show called The Repair Shop. It's about this group of people who are master woodworkers, clockmakers, and restoration specialists for antiques. They could take a 300-year-old clock, which is broken and mangled, and make it new. They could take a Victorian chair that looks like a Wolverine beat it up and restore it as if it was never used. It is truly amazing what this team can do. But what they do does not even compare to the restoration that God offers his people. This is why we should read the book of Ezekiel. It is all about the promise and realization of restoration. The book of Ezekiel was written by the prophet Ezekiel between 592 and 570 B.C. Like Jeremiah, he was a priest who was called to be a prophet of the Lord. His prophetic ministry shows a priestly emphasis in his concern with the temple, priesthood, sacrifices, and Shekinah, the glory of God. Like most of the other prophets, Ezekiel's twofold theme was condemnation and consolation. When the city of Jerusalem fell, Ezekiel comforted the people by assuring them of God's covenant promise of future blessing and complete restoration. Ezekiel's section on divine consolation is more detailed and extensive than that of his contemporary Jeremiah. So can we find Jesus in the book of Ezekiel? Yes, we can. In chapter 17, verses 22 through 24, he depicts the Messiah as a tender twig that becomes a stately cedar on a lofty mountain. This is similar to what we find in Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Zechariah. The Messiah is a king who has the right to rule, and he is the true shepherd who will deliver and feed his flock. So what's the main thing from Ezekiel? It comes down to one word, restoration. God is in the business of saving our souls and restoring our lives and future. In Ezekiel chapter 36, this is what he writes. For I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and will bring you into your own land. I will also sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will place my spirit within you and cause you to follow my statutes and carefully observe my ordinances. You will live in the land that I gave your ancestors. You will be my people, and I will be your God. You see, friend, this is what God does. He promises restoration, and he delivers it in spades. So here's my challenge for you today. Celebrate the restoration. Many of us resist becoming all God saved us to be. We want heart transformation without the complete makeover. But God cares too much about us to accept that. Today, celebrate what God is doing in your life. There is no greater way to celebrate than to embrace that restoration. When we celebrate God's restoration in our lives, we will win the day. 